We are The Table, and we are so glad that you have taken time out of your week to join us. Here at The Table, it is our hope to move you forward in life and faith over the course of this message. At The Table, we do things just a bit differently. We pose questions in real time, and we want to give you some time to wrestle with those questions as well. Again, thanks for joining us, and we hope that this message moves you forward. Oh, Church, it is good to be with you this morning on this Mother's Day. Um, I know Jeannie did an amazing job, so I'm not going to continue on. But let me just say, moms, whether you're uh, starting, preparing, empty nesting, in the middle of it, I just want to thank you for being amazing, amazing, amazing people. Uh, You are carrying out your calling as a mother. I just want you to know that. that. That your purpose in life, the greatest thing you could do, is parent your children. And so I just want to thank you this morning. Can we give our moms a hand this morning? What an amazing, an amazing thing. So this morning, uh, we are beginning a new series. I'm so excited for this series this morning called The Voice. Uh, As I've been saying, one of my favorite bands says this. They say, uh, the voice you listen to will shape you, and the one you ignore will fade away. I would guess for you, and at least for me, sometimes I spend a lot of time listening to the voice I should ignore, but ignore the voice I should be listening to. You see, the loudest voice in your mind has the power to make or break your life. Listen to the right voice, and you have wisdom and direction. You listen to the wrong voice, and it will suffocate your life. And so, hey, this series is meant over the next four weeks to help you understand why it's so important to have the right voice, God's voice, why it's important to be talking and in conversation with him, because we believe that it's going to lead us to the life that he's calling us to. So this morning, I want to read uh, this amazing story. Uh, Some of you have probably heard of it, and maybe some of you haven't. And if you haven't, we'd love to get a Bible in your hands today, but it's going to come from 1 Samuel chapter 3. Um, Yes, there is a sequel to this book, hence the the first Samuel. And and what's really cool about the Samuel narratives is that it's a story about the middle of of God's chosen people's journey. They're at this midpoint. It's kind of like Dorothy on the road to Oz where she comes to the, should I go left? Should I go right? It's been a while since I've watched it, so I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure she listens to a scarecrow. (laughs) And this is the point for God's people. Do they go left or do they go right? And what we find in these Samuel stories, or over the course of these two volumes, is four large lives who learn to listen to God. You see, they live these big lives because they've learned to listen to a big God. And they've been been destined. They've been given the privilege of leading this nation and helping them decipher. So this morning... Uh, Would you stand with me as we read this? Uh, This is a lengthy story, so uh, we're going to get a workout before we begin. That's okay. It'll get you ready because it's a little dreary today, and I don't want anybody falling asleep. So here we go. I love this. It says, the boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. Not medium rare, for those of you thinking about steak. It was just rare. There were not many visions, he says. One night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in the usual place. The lamp of God had not gone out yet, and Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord where the ark of God was. And then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, here I am. You you called me? But Eli said, "I, I didn't call you. Go back to bed, lie down, get some rest, get some shut-eye. I'm not talking to you in the middle of the night. Again, the Lord calls Samuel, and, and Samuel gets up, and he, and he runs to Eli, and he says, Here I am, you called me. My son, Eli, he said, I did not call you. Go back and lie down. Now, Samuel, I love this. Now, Samuel did not yet know the Lord which is so key. It means that somebody here in this story was accustomed to knowing the voice of the Lord, but it wasn't Samuel because he didn't know the Lord and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. 
Third time, the Lord called Samuel. Samuel got up. He went to Eli and said, here I am. You called me? Then Eli realizes. This was the Lord that was calling the boy. And so he told Samuel, go and lie down. And if he calls you again, say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went down. And he lay in the place. And the Lord came and he stood there calling as all the other times. And he says, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel says, hey, speak, speak, Lord. I'm ready to listen. Speak, God. I'm ready for you to say whatever it is you need to say to me. And the Lord said to Samuel, this is so good. See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make the ears of everyone tingle. What a funny word, tingle. See, I'm about to do something in you. I'm about to do something in you that will make everyone's ears tingle. Uh, I've entitled today's message, Listen Up. Listen Up. Let's pray this morning. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity to, to come into your presence and to hear your word. I pray this morning that you would use me however you see fit. May we be receptive and open. And it's in the powerful name of Jesus we pray this. Amen. 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 Uh, on your way down, share with your neighbor or write down the current podcast that you're listening to. Tell them what audiobook you're listening to. All right, let's get started this morning. Uh, some of you have to get out for Mother's Day dinner. I do too. And so uh, let's get cracking. Here we go. Here we go. In 2012, in 2012, I began my second gig as a youth pastor. It's pretty, man, youth ministry, let me tell you, it was a good time. It was a good time. So I went from leading a really small church that had a large youth group. Uh, we would have 60 to 100 kids on any given Wednesday. I'll never forget my first fifth quarter we used to have these things called fifth quarter after football games I had 125 kids show up to my gym and I wasn't ready for it I just said play dodgeball and uh, I remember talking to a parent and a ball came flying between my face and the parents face and I thought students need structure wow what a lesson students need structure and from then on I learned that you should prepare for all those students coming so I went from leading a, a small church and a big youth group to a large church with a small youth group there in Kansas. I remember my first Sunday, I rolled up and there were about just over a dozen people. And so there were these expectations that came with this new job that, hey, you're going to grow this youth group. Uh, we're hiring you because you led a large youth group. We want you to come and grow this youth group. And, and you know how this goes when you get a new job. <laughs> you, you, you know how this feels like on the other end when you're preparing for the job you're asking yourself how much in that interview that I told them how much of that is actually true I mean I know it I know it but learning to execute it is another thing and so you begin to have these doubts you begin to have these voices in your head that tell you you're not ready and you're not worthy you're not ready, and you're not worthy. And over and over and over again, I'm wrestling this, preparing for this new church, because I, I didn't want to let anybody down. But again, I kept hearing these voices saying, you're not ready, and you're not worthy. And what was so amazing was just a couple weeks before I arrived in Kansas. Oh, I love Kansas, by the way. It's, it's an amazing place to live. Before I got there, I, I received this email from one of the leaders. And they said this. Oh, this is so good. By the way, I go back to this email. Whenever I'm having a bad day, uh, whenever I'm having a bad day, I just go back to this email. I know you can't read it, so I'm going to read it to you. It says, Brad, since June and I are out of town, we won't be there to welcome you, but we wanted to send you a quick note. It says, I'm thinking you are feeling excited to be here, but also feeling a lot of pressure from what you believe to be huge expectations. 
He says, these are normal and new job feelings. And then I highlighted this in my notes because it was so powerful. He says, you need to know that we offered you to become our youth pastor because of who you are in Christ. We offered you to become our youth pastor because of who God has made you to be and who God has called you to be. And what's crazy is I thought they called me to be the youth pastor because of what he says next and what you have already done. You see, I was focusing on the accomplishments. He was focusing on who God has called me to be. And he says it here. He says, therefore, he says, take off any perceptions or perceived expectations. I'll get it right. I'll get it right. Of immediate greatness. He says, just be obedient to what God is, is calling you to do. Oh, I, I, I love this. Just be obedient. If you're listening to what God is asking you to do, we know that you'll be obedient to his calling. Our church has been blessed to have a good group of adults that are willing to support you. And by support, I mean help you to be the most effective youth pastor you can be. Check this out. He says, we will follow your leading and your direction. Man, don't, don't miss this at all. It is who you are in Christ. It's because you are listening to the call that we will follow your leading and your direction. He says, use us as you see fit. I believe no one's going to try to run the show or take, his, take you where they want to go. That said, do what you feel to help us know Christ, grow in Christ, serve Christ, and share Christ. As you take some time to get to know the kids and you get to know them. He says, man, feel free to stop, start, do anything different. We're not stuck on programs. Uh, we, just, we just want people to meet Jesus. He said, we're excited to have you in your family. Jeff and June. Jeff and June. I'll never forget receiving this email. And, and I went from hearing the words, you aren't ready and you aren't worthy, to having confidence and clarity about my ability to lead. I love Jeff and June. See, it's funny because if you knew them, they own one of the biggest furniture stores in Kansas. By the way, you need furniture, go to Furniture Mall of Kansas, check it out. Love those people. They're amazing. But if anybody should have been following leading, it should have been me following them. Like, over the course of three years, what I found from Jeff was an amount of wisdom that I just, I could not I could not find on my own. I, I love it. Uh, what Jeff told me when I came to Joliet, he said, uh, do not wait to make changes. Do not wait to make changes. People are expecting change. See, in school what they teach you is, wait a, wait a whole year. Wait till you, you sort of schmooze everybody and you sort of like, it's like a bait and switch thing. Pretend like you actually care what they think for a whole year and then just rip off the band-aid, which Jeff was just like, just make changes. Just make changes. J just do it. And here's what I learned from Jeff. Here's what I learned from Jeff. Don't miss this. Listening to the right voice allows you to live and lead with confidence and clarity. Come on, you cannot miss this. Listening to the right voice allows you to live and to lead with confidence and clarity. Can I just speak this over your life for just a second? When we meet Samuel and he begins to listen to God, I love what God says. He says, I'm about to do something in Israel. Let's just translate this over to your life. When, when, when you begin to listen to God, what he's saying is, I'm about to do something in you fill in the blank. I'm about to do something in your marriage where you can't seem to get it right when you listen to me. I'm about to, to do something in the conversation that you know you need to have, but you're afraid to have if you listen to me. I'm about to, to, to do something in the job that you're about to take, but you're not sure you should take if you would just simply listen to me. You see, when you begin to listen to me, I will do the unexpected in your life. I just want this to be clear to you this morning. God, God's goal is to communicate to you in the areas of your life where you feel most unsure and unclear and as though you aren't ready for whatever is coming next in your life. That is God's goal, is he wants to bring clarity to where you are headed. You see, I remember, 
I remember growing up and people would say, God is not the author of confusion. Or they'll say things like, God is not a God of confusion. Have, have any of you met God? Like the most complicated, nuanced, I can't understand kind of person and being there is. Confusing. Just let your kids ask you a question about faith. Th this week I was putting our boys to bed. Uh, I walk into Miles' room and Janelle says, ask your dad the question. <laughs> so I sit down after our winner's talk last week. You remember that? That was so much fun. I sit down with him this week and he says, Dad, uh, did, did Jesus get to know God before he came to earth? And if so, why did, why did God choose Jesus and not someone else? This is a nine-year-old, by the way, asking these questions. I said, you know, son, sometimes we don't need to explain things. And to be honest with you, I don't know the answer to your question. Uh, God sometimes is confusing. The bigness and the greatness and the, and the majesty of the God that we serve can be confusing because we can't wrap our minds around it. But I, I want you to understand that, that God is about giving you clear direction. He's not about confusing the path. It's about giving you clear direction on where you're headed. You see, God's goal is to communicate to you the areas that are most unclear, that are most unsure, where you are insecure in your life. And it starts with listening. It starts with listening. And so I'll just say it one more time so you don't miss it. Listening to the right voice. This is God's goal for you. Listening to the right voice allows you to live and lead with confidence and clarity. So can I ask you a question this morning? I really don't need your permission. I'm going to ask it anyway. <laughs> Whose voice is loudest in your life? Well, what's the loudest voice that you currently have speaking into your life? And, I, and I'll follow that up with this question. Is it the right one? Is it the right one? So one of the things we love to do at the table is we love to ask you questions. We want you to talk about what we're talking about. You may not remember a thing I say today, but you'll remember this question. And so you can talk to people around you. You can talk to the partner next to you. If you came alone today, feel free. Just write it down or text them. Last week, I was up here and I got a text message. And I was like, do people not understand I'm preaching right now? Why are you texting me in church? And then it was funny because it was my wife. And she was, she was answering the question that I asked. And she said, you told me I could text in church. I'm like, I really don't want you to do what I ask you to do. <laughs> totally kidding. About anyway, take a couple minutes. Answer this question. What's the loudest voice in your life? And is it the right one? So we've established right up front that the right voice in your life will allow you to live and lead with confidence and clarity. But you know this, and I know this, that so many times there's a time where, where it just goes wrong. There's just a time where we happen to get it wrong. And, and I love this in the story. I want to go back to the story for just a second because this, this is so key. It says, then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, here I am. And check this out. He ran back to Eli. This happens three times. He, he runs back to Eli. He said, here I am, you called me. But Eli says, no, I didn't call you. I just want you to go back. I want you to go back to bed. The voice calls. Here I am, you called me? No, I want you to go back to bed. Three different times we see that, that Samuel gets up and he runs back to Eli. I love how this story begins. It says that in this day, the voice of the Lord, the calling of the Lord was rare. Can I just say, it wasn't that God wasn't there. It was that his people were unprepared. As I told you earlier, it, it tells us that Samuel doesn't follow God yet. He doesn't know God's voice yet. But there's somebody in the story who does. Don't miss this. Eli is a priest. 
Eli is, is one who's supposed to be hearing from God constantly. Uh, Eli is a priest who leads the people into the presence of God because he's constantly hearing from God. But it's interesting because uh, Eli doesn't recognize God's voice the first time, which tells me this. He's unfamiliar in the practice of listening to God. The reason God's voice was, was rare because his people were unprepared. Eli was unprepared to be listening and practicing and being in the habit of listening to God's voice over and over and over and again. And what we get is Samuel, out of respect for his priest, Samuel, out of respect for Eli, goes back, but don't miss this, he keeps running to the wrong voice. Samuel keeps running back to the wrong voice, and I just think this is so true for us that so many of us spend so much time running back to the wrong voice. I'll put it this way. We like to listen out instead of listening up. We are so busy listening out that we can't listen up. And, and I just want to give you some context for this. You see, Israel is transitioning from judges to kings. And God says to Samuel, listen, um, I don't want my nation to be ruled by a king. I want my nation to, to have me as their king. But you know what? Do you know what they said? Oh, look at this nation. Listen to what they're saying. See, they have kings. They have rulers. They have people in charge of them. They're telling us we should run our country the same way. We want a king because we're listening, we're listening out instead of listening up, instead of listening to what God is saying. And God gives them over to their desires and says, hey, man, if you want that, that's what you've got. You've got a king. Let me give you an example. We had a young lady um, who was part of this church. Notice I said was part of this church. She got excited about Jesus, gave her life to Jesus. She was being mentored by one of our, our staff employees here, and they just had a great relationship. And, and she was excited about faith. She was coming to church. She was inviting her family. Um, what was interesting is she had clarity and direction about where she was going when she had Jesus in her life. But at some point, there was a transition of, of listening to God to then listening out. She started listening to other voices and other people in her life. And as we were preparing this, this message and this series, our staff member said, I'm so frustrated with her. She said, you know what she'll do? She'll call me and she'll ask my advice, but she won't actually listen to what I have to say. And then I realized, you know, every time she calls, here's what I do. I put her on speakerphone. I said, hey, it's good to hear from you. I set her in the car seat as I'm driving, and I just keep driving, and I don't say a word. I just put her on speakerphone, and she just talks the whole time. And our staff member said, she's, she's listening to all the wrong voices. It's not like my advice would matter anyway, because what she really needs is the direction of God in her life. You see, some of us are starving in our lives because we've stopped listening to what God is saying to us. Can I just say, I, I made a huge boo-boo when I first started out preaching. When I was a newbie to preaching, some days I still feel like I'm a newbie to preaching. Uh, but when I really first started, um, I remember I would get the scripture, I'd get the idea, and then what I'd do is i spend the entire week reading and listening out and listening to what other pastors and theologians and what my favorite pastors had to say. I would find the subject, I would go to their podcast, and I would listen to the wisdom that they hopefully would impart in my life so I would appear smarter than what I am. But you know, you've got this figured out. I'm not that smart. And, and I remember I would spend 20, 30 hours a week just studying for a message. I could never get them written. It was week to week. I was tired and exhausted of it. And a mentor said to me, he said, Oh, Kevin said to me, this is so good. He said, I start every, every preparation for every message by prayer. He said, every time I sit down to, to begin to pin the words that I think God wants to speak to me, he says, I, I listen. And what he was saying to me was, uh, I've learned to listen up and not listen out. I've learned to listen to God's voice in my life before I decide to listen to everyone else's. And he said, I don't, need, I don't need other people to give me the content that God wants to speak through me. He says, I'm confident enough in where he is leading me that when I listen to his voice, I can trust that what I'm saying is clear, I'm confident, and there's direction in what we're doing. 
And man, I tell you what, that, there was freedom in that. Man, I went from spending 20, 30 hours a week to I can get it done in about six, seven hours. And the only time I ever go back to look at what the theologians have to say and the pastors have to say is to make sure that I'm on the right track and I'm not saying anything uh, that's heretical. <laughs> Borderline sometimes. Borderline. So you can cross-reference me. You can double-check me. You can correct me anytime when I'm wrong. But it was amazing when I would start by listening. It was like, oh, I, I, that's not coming from me. I couldn't put this together. I couldn't figure that piece out. Only God could be speaking this into me. And I'll just say to you, uh, start by listening and stop listening out. When it comes to our relationships, come on, you do this, you do this, I do this. Oh, let me find this podcast. It'll help me with my marriage. When we need to figure out how we need to get in better shape, we just go to YouTube and watch the fittest people. Oh, they'll show me how to do it. Oh, you know, hey, I want to I learn more about God in my life. I want to I figure out this whole spiritual thing. So I'll go listen to other pastors and what they have to say. Uh, can I just say this? Um, th th you can get overload after a while. You can spend so much time listening out, but you're starving. Everything is just as muddled. Everything is just as dark. There's nothing clear about where you're headed. And it's because we haven't learned to listen up. And I just want you to hear this today. This is so good. This is so good. Listening leads to leaning. Listening leads to leaning. When you learn to listen, when you learn to listen up, you begin to lean in. Can I just, can I just say this this morning? Uh, don't be mad at me for saying this. But some of us in our life, we're not, we're not leaning in, right? We're not leaning in. We're not listening up because we haven't learned how to listen. I, I love this thought. Um, I've been reading this book called Whisper by Mark Batterson. I'm going to give away two books next week because I meant to give away one this week, but Amazon was running late this morning, and they didn't know that I had a time crunch, and so uh, I'll pass out two because I missed this one this week. But he, he tells a story at the beginning. He says there was an opera singer who, who couldn't hit the notes anymore. And everybody was confused. He'd been to every doctor, and they couldn't figure out why this opera singer couldn't hit the notes anymore. And, and Dr. Tomatis had this idea, and so he started doing some research. And what he found that was that opera singers, within a meter's distance, sing at 140 decibels. Let me put this in perspective. That is like, it's like Top Gun. It's like, an, it's like a jet taking off on an aircraft carrier. You know, where they have the cool helmets, cool glasses, and the big earmuffs. Yeah, opera singers don't come with, I don't think anybody would come to a show if they came out with a Top Gun helmet on. Oh, that'd be cool, though. That would be really cool. <laughs> and what they found was this, was that, that his voice, his voice, his own voice was causing him deafness. That the reason why he couldn't reach the note was because he couldn't hear the note. You see, the voice can only produce what it hears. And I just want you to know this, that you can only produce in your life what you're hearing. Uh, one of my favorite writers says this. He says, um, listening is not about you getting what you want from God. It's about God getting what he wants from you. This is so important that when you learn to listen, oh, you begin to lean in. Your life begins to produce the thing that God wants from it because you're attuned to it. You're saying, how do you do that? How do you learn to listen? Man, go back to this scripture. It's so good. I don't want you to miss this. So good. It says, the Lord came, stood there, calling as other times, Samuel, Samuel. And listen to what Samuel says. Shh. God, you should be listening. Shh. God, you need to be listening. Isn't that how we start our prayers? No, God, you shut up for a minute because I'm going to tell you what's wrong with my life and that's how we're going to start the day. You be quiet for just a second. I know you're God, but right now I'm in control and I need you to be Mr. Genie. I need you to make this go away. I need you to make it right. 
It's not what Samuel says. He says, speak, God. I'm ready to listen. Speak, God. I'm ready to listen. Can I just encourage you this week to start every day this week by simply saying, speak, God. I'm ready to listen. Speak, God. I'm ready for you to do something. God, I know you're about to do something, but I just need to listen. I need to hear what you have to say. And what happens is your posture, your posture begins to to lean in. This is so key. Don't be offended, but some of us, this is our posture to God. We just cross our arms. I thought about this this week. I don't know why I thought about this, but you can't stop a punch when your arms are crossed. I don't know what that has to do with the message other than that's the first thing I thought about. To some degree, I think there are times in our lives where we aren't ready for what's next because our arms are crossed. Some of us, if, if I could, we, 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 we approach God like this. Oh, man, it's, it's a good day. Whatever you want to do, God, I'll be here. <laughs> Asleep. Is that leaning in? See, when, when I think about leaning in, I, I get this picture of, of this. I'm not a sprinter. <laughs> I never was a sprinter, but this is the picture I get. You see, I'm leaning in. I'm leaning in. When I begin to listen, I, I start to lean into whatever it is that God's taking me into. See, our mission is that you would live in a forward-moving relationship with God, and it starts with listening because when you listen, you begin to lean into the thing that God has for you. I just want you to hear this today. This is so good. The other day, I, I was talking to somebody on the phone, and we were talking about our previous message where we said, fill up, but pour out, and get invested in our church, and that's really important. And, and, and they said to me, and this is so good, they, they said to me, listen, I'm pouring out, just not at the church right now. And at first I was like, really? Really? And then they said to me, oh, see, I'm, I'm pouring out into my, my job. I'm pouring out into the, the kids that I'm teaching. I'm, I'm leaning into the thing that God is. I believe that I'm bringing the kingdom of God on earth here at my job. You see, I'm giving everything I have because I've been listening to God. Can I just say, the, the person I was talking to, I have the utmost respect for because I know that they are tuned and they are listening to what God is telling them. See, they knew that, hey, not, now is not the time for me to be serving in the church because I have to be focused. I have to be focused and leaning into the mission in front of me, which just so happens to be at my school. And I told you now, I said, wow, I need more people like this. I don't like hearing no. I mean, I don't like hearing no. But I have the utmost respect. And I was so excited that we have people in our church who take this posture in their work life. And they're just ready. They're just leaning in. They're bringing about the mission because they've learned to listen. Oh, I love that. You, you can tell. You, you can tell who's leaning in by how much they're listening to God. You look at the people around and you say, mm, they're listening. Oh, they start every day with, speak God, I'm ready to listen. And so this week, can I encourage you? Can I just give you one word of hope? If you want to have the right voice speaking into your life, where you can live and lead with clarity and confidence, it starts by saying, speak God. I'm listening. And God says, I'm about to do something in you. If this message challenged you and moved you forward, personally or in faith, we encourage you to share it with someone who needs a message of hope today. And if you're interested or looking for ways to partner with us in our mission here at The Table, head on over to thetablejoliet.org for more information.